Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today is the 10th day of building a Scrap Buster idea book. And the two projects or um, items for today are belly band and window. Belly band and window. And again, kind of broad topics because a window can be anything that you can see through. Here is a one-sided window. Uh, just an envelope, the return mailer type envelope with just window on the front. And so that would be a window. Here's another window that's partially done. You can see I just put a piece of transparency on the back and I could put this, a second one of these exact same things together to have a see-through window, or I could put it on top of something to have a one-way window. Uh, you can make windows using these um, slide holder dealy bops, you know, back in the day when there were slide projectors and they would hold the negatives. And you can use this, just put a little transparency in there. Or some of them, I think these are for coin collectors, they've got transparency in them. And you can see there's adhesive here. So you put a coin in there and you flip it, peel the adhesive up and flip it closed. And that's kind of what this one is. I've got um, some mini daffs, mini daffodils in here. So you can put anything in there. Um, so you can get them ready made, but you can also make them yourself. And I'll show you really quickly what I'm talking about. Like somebody asked me how I made this one and I did it the same essential way that I'm going to do the one we're going to do today. I just used two bits of leftover cardstock and some acetate. And in this case, it happens to be a die cut. Um, two die cuts. You want them to be the same if you want to go front and back. So the way I'm going to do that is, and this is just one way, there's lots and lots of ways. I've got two pieces of cardstock. I'm just going to use a simple small one here. I generally, if I'm going to do a front and back, I line them up and try to punch them both or die cut them both at the same time, just so that they line up correctly. Otherwise, it's kind of a nightmare to line them up. And I just grabbed a punch, uh, let's see, one and a quarter inch, because the die cuts that I glued together, I glued together two butterflies, they're really tiny, so I didn't need a big spot. And I'm going to guess that this is centered, but if it's not, I can come back in later on and um, center it. All right, so there we go. I had pretty close on the top and the bottom centered. All right, so I've got both of my pieces cut, okay? And these are the butterflies, they're... Um, itty bitty butterflies. I don't know if you can see them, but they're die cuts and somebody cut them for me. I didn't cut them. I bought them cut and I just glued them front to back. So it's two sided. And then this is just acetate. And when I first started teaching, we used this with overhead projectors to uh, teach the kids lessons. And then I was able to just buy these at thrift stores and outlets and such because we don't use that technology anymore. So you've got your piece of acetate. Uh, I'm sure you can buy them all different kinds of places. You can get them in packaging, clear packaging. You just cut it. This is just a little bit thinner because my sample, my specimen, um, isn't obviously real. So I don't need to grate anything very thick. So I'm going to want to cut it to fit the back of this. And when you're working with acetate, now you can sew it in, as I and I do that frequently. But a lot of times I will glue the acetate down first to get it to where I want it. And because acetate is almost completely non-porous, it will smear. You need a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of glue. If you use too much glue, what'll happen is it'll smear to the sides and it will get on your acetate and you will be able to see it. And if that doesn't bother you, awesome. But if it bugs you like it bugs me, then make sure you only use a little bit of glue. So I'm just going to cut this down. Right, so I'll need two pieces of this because I'm doing a double-sided window. So I'm going to use this as my sample. And they don't have to be perfect because they're not going to show. All right. Then I've got my acetate. And it's smaller than the dimension of my window. And I am going to use a tiny bit of glue. And I'm going to even smear that down. Because see, look, what's going to happen with that, what I just said. I do not want that to smear in my window. And that's what sweatpants are for. All right. Make sure it doesn't go over the sides, go over the edge. 
and I put it in place. So I've got, uh, you can't see it so well, but I've got acetate on this one. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. Um, I actually like this as a front and back, so make sure they're not upside down. No, they're not. Okay, so I'm going to put the acetate on this one. Notice how I'm trying to stay away from the edge of that window. And because I'm going to sew around it later, you don't have to sew around it, but I like the way that looks, so I'm going to. I only need a tiny bit just to hold the plastic in place so that it doesn't move while I'm putting them in. Okay, so now I've got acetate on both sides, right? And I will line them up like this. And I could have inked the edges, and I realistically would have inked the edges, but so it's like this, and you can see through it. Then what I do is put my image in between the two. Now some people use a tiny dot of glue and I haven't had great luck with that because it shows. But um, I'm just going to put a tiny bit and I'm really liking this reptile glue so let's see if it works. And that should be enough to hold it in place without smearing. Oh, it's not centered. Yeah, it doesn't even, not even enough. Okay, I'm a little nervous. You could use transparency tape, but that would show too. And I don't want it to show. All right, let's try that again. I don't generally do this. I generally just put it down, clamp it, and sew around it, and it stays put. And just like that. Now, again, I have to be really careful with this because this is a non-porous surface that glue is going to smear. And then I'll put a little bit more over here where there's just paper to paper. The harder a surface is, the less porous it is. So like vellum and tracing, well, tracing paper is more porous than vellum. But you have a longer dry time and you have less likelihood of whatever item, glue, whatever, that absorbs into an ink. So you've got, like I said, a longer dry time. It will dry, but um, it also smears because it doesn't absorb into it. All right, and that is my transparency, okay, the window. The other item was a belly band, and a belly band traditionally is something like, oh, not this one, I put markers in where the belly bands were, here we go. This page is a belly band. Not this so much, this is just a pocket, but inside of it, Something that goes all the way through. Oh, so I forgot that I had done that. This is a double-sided belly band. So it's not a true belly band because it doesn't go all the way through top to bottom. Okay, so forget that one. Not really a true belly band. A belly band. Ah, here we go. This is a double belly band. It goes all the way through top to bottom. Now, sometimes a belly band will go from the top of your page to the bottom of your page, or it'll go side to side. So it'll go horizontally or vertically. And it can, but it doesn't have to. Anything that slides through all the way is essentially a belly band. So I've got a vertical belly band here, and I've got a horizontal belly band up here because it can go all the way through. So there's, no, the insides are just pockets, but that's a double belly band. And let's see, I think there's an, another one that I marked in here. Okay, here we go. This is another one. This didn't go to the top, top to the bottom, but again, it's another horizontal belly band, right? Because my item can slip all the way through. It's not blocked in the back. And I just threw those down. That was great. Excuse me a moment as I pick them up off the floor. Now, a belly band can be as complex as you want it to be or as simple. This is just a scrap of really, really thin paper. Uh, scrap of paper and I wrap it around and I could tape or glue it down I would actually glue it and then tape it and I generally tape the ends of my belly bands or the back of my belly band just so that things can slide in and out without getting caught and then when I flip this back around okay I had a card over here um, don't know what I did with the card that I put over here ah here we go and that, see, so it's from top to bottom. If this were my page, top to bottom, and this can slide through. So that's a belly band. This is a belly band. 
it goes across my page. Let's see, the print goes this way. So it only is taking up a portion of it, so it's going across the horizon. And then I can use it to tuck things in like this. It's a catch. One of the easiest ways for new folks, and I have several new folks here, which is why I'm doing this, but one of the easiest ways to make a belly band is to get an envelope. This is just a standard cheap envelope and I glued it closed, right? Now, for the sake of thinness and ease, what a lot of times I will do is glue layers and really, really thin layers. So I'll put my glue stick down and I will put, put really thin dictionary or book page on top. scraper. Okay, smooth it out because I want it as smooth as possible, right? And here we go. I didn't do a perfect job, but that's okay. I'm going to tear it down because I want it to be about the size that, um, of my surface so that I can see what I'm doing and where I'm going. And I'll use that for another technique that I'll show you another time. All right. So it's approximate, doesn't have to be perfect. And now I'm gonna glue a second layer because this is really thin dictionary page on top of a really thin envelope. So we're not talking any bulk at all. And then this is just, uh, you know, thin tissue paper. That's the word I'm looking for, thin tissue paper. All right, this happens to be a Tim Holtz tissue paper, but just about any tissue paper work will work. Decoupage paper works really well because it's super thin. You just want thin because um, you build up bulk quickly. All right, so I've got two layers on top of my envelope, right? Now I am going to just chop the top and the bottom. I could have gone side to side, it doesn't really matter. And now I have a really, well maybe I do, I have a really thin, easy to use belly band. Let me get rid of a scrap of cardstock. Thin, easy to use. So I would glue this down in my book and there's my belly band. I can use it top to bottom, roll this over, tear it off, do whatever I want. But that's a belly band. Oh, well that's too big. I don't need a belly band that big. Okay, now you've got a couple belly bands. Maybe you just wanted something like this so that you could, uh, too big. Mm, here we go. No, too big. Ah, here we go. I wanted something thin and simple to put a, a writing pad on. So I can go like this and use my belly band, right? Glue this down in the back, use my belly band to hold my writing paper in place. All right, those are the two for today, belly band and window. I had a couple questions, and um, yesterday's video was absurdly long. Thank you very much for the people who were defending me. Um, I, I know that sometimes some of the information is a little more helpful than others, but again, I'm trying to go over different ways that you can use scraps and build an idea book and make useful things with scraps. So that's the purpose here. Thank you for that. Um, sorry Silk. Somebody asked me about Sorry Silk. And I am not a pro, but I can tell you there is a difference in Sorry Silk. I am not even remotely a pro. You can see this I bought is Sorry Silk. And it's kind of shiny and it catches and it frays. This I also bought is Sorry Silk. And they're the same color, but you can see one is a lot more sheen than the other. One is more satiny. And I am not a sorry silk expert, but I know that some stores on Etsy are really highly rated with the, for their sorry silk and people give good reviews, then you're going to get, you know, a better quality sorry silk or like this one with the snags and such in it. I mean, it's fine for what I use it for, but I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want to pay a high premium price for poor quality, sorry, poor quality, sorry silk. All right. Next question. Okay. Somebody asked me uh, about my flowers. That's what it was. There was a question about the flowers, the difference between distress inks and distress oxides. And I should have grabbed them and I'm, they're right over here. 
and I will grab two. Let's see, this was, oh, I'll grab two of my favorite colors. Wild Honey is one of my absolute favorites. All right, Distress Ink, Distress Oxide. Tim Holtz has a video on the difference between these two. Oh, look, I have a little um, template thing there. So this is Distress, Distress Oxide. When you open it up, it's a felt pad in its vibrant color. Distress Ink. When you open it up, it's a felt pad, totally different color. Now, I will probably butcher this, but in a basic nutshell, the Distress Ink is dye-based ink. So you're going to get more of a clearish look. You'll get the color you want. But if I were to put this on, say, dark brown cardstock, it's not going to show up. And both of these react with water because they both have that... Um, capacity, basically. The oxide is a combination of pigment and dye, and it's going to be more paint-like, more chalky. So if I put this color, let's do a lighter color so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is just butcher paper, right? This is the oxide. I put that down, and if I spray water on that, it's going to, when it dries, it's going to have a more paint-like, chalky-like finish. With the Distress Ink, I put it down. It's going to have a um, clearer finish. And I think I've got a water spritzer here. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of water in that. And when you get them wet, you're going to get different, different looks. But you can see the oxide looks a whole lot more. Well, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. The oxide looks a whole lot more like paint and the ink is a lot more translucent. So that's, I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, Tim Holtz is the pro. Go watch his, oops, sorry about that. I just dropped everything. Um, trying to get a paper towel. Tim Holtz is the pro. He will be able to tell you everything. But in a nutshell, oxides are chalky and more like paint. Inks are generally more translucent. They're both distressed, so they both react with water. Okay, so there's that. I hope that was the information you were looking for. Sorry about the loud noises and sound effects. I um been working on the journals, personalizing the journals, and my cave is kind of getting out of control. All right, the last question I think that I had today was somebody said that they've watched it a couple times and they weren't clear what I was talking about with the double-sided paper clips. So one paper clip, two scraps of paper. Am I in frame? Okay, two scraps of paper. Put the two scraps together and then put the paper clip over the top, all right? And now you're gonna put a little bit of packing tape. I mean, you don't have to, you can do something else if you choose to. I like packing tape, it's handy and it holds the paper clips in place, all right? You just put your paper clip over two pieces. You want two pieces of paper because that's going to give you the center for your paper clip. And I'm not even gonna put anything on top but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So I put this over, and now if I were to spread this apart, you can see that there is the center of the paper clip, the place where it's going to go over. So whatever decoration I want on this side, let's say I want to use these little circles, I will put the decoration on this side, and then I'll flip it over, and then I'll put whatever decoration I wanted to put on this side. But the key with this is you want to use two pieces of paper the same size. And I, like I said, I use cardstock because uh, they're sturdier and your paper clip itself will displace the paper that you're working with. And you put the two pieces together, put your paper clip over the top and tape them down. And now I've got two surfaces to do with whatever I want. Maybe I wanted to make this into a paper clip. So I would glue this down here and this is one side of my paper clip, right? So the center goes over my page, front and back, and this is one side of my paper clip, and maybe this, this pretty flower or something would be the other side of my paper clip, right? So now I've got a two-sided paper clip. Okay, that's all I've got for today. 
Ah, when we get closer to being done with these, probably in another five or six days, I will show you how I am going to do the idea book. And it's going to be pretty basic, but anybody can do it and anybody can follow along. And I will walk you through my process. But guys, you can put these in any kind of journal. You can put them in a composition book. You can put them in just a, a simple, you know, pamphlet stitch signature booklet that you've put together. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And in fact, mine won't be. I'm going to use tabs to list them simply because I forget these ideas as well. And I think, and I think I'm forgetting something and I apologize, but um, that's all I wrote down. So that's all I've got. Oh, no more hour long videos. It took over six hours to upload that the other night, last night. So um, it didn't even come out yesterday. It came out, ended up coming out today because I tried to load it at about eight o'clock last night. All right. Take care. Happy creating and thank you for watching.